Hey folks, Sylvia's here. I'm starting another game for my, um, uh, what do I call it? My, uh, like, indie game, flash game playlist. So this is Creeper World 3 Arc Eternal. Um, before I start anything, I just want to point out that, um, so this is, as you can see, the third version, third game in the Creeper World franchise. Um, Creeper World 1, 2, and parts of 3 are all available as, like, various forms of, like, demo-type games on, um, on Congregate and many other places, I'm sure. Uh, so you can test them out there. Uh, I think the Creeper World games are one of the, like, two or three games that I've ever actually purchased from playing the demo. Um, which, which says something to how enjoyable I actually found the game. It also helps that the actual, the full version was relatively inexpensive. Uh, just to kind of explain a little bit, Creeper World 1 is the original, and it's very similar to Creeper World 3. Uh, Creeper World 3 is more like a upgrade to 1 with some additional features, more storyline, and all that stuff. I believe the storyline is from 1 is referenced in here, but only slightly. We'll, we'll see when we get to the game. I sort of forget large amounts of this. Um, and then Creeper World 2 was a, like... The still basic premise, but like a very different game. Like Creeper World 1 and 3 both have a like RTS like above the world view where you're seeing the roofs of everything, essentially. Um, Creeper World 2 instead uh, flipped that so that you were viewing it like a portrait type thing, uh, like the profile of all the structures. And, um, Instead of it being, like, on the surface of the world, Creeper World War 2 was, like, underground, where you were going through, like, caverns and stuff. Um, so, Creeper World 2 is the most dissimilar out of the three games. Still a very enjoyable game, though. It's the one I like the least, though. Mostly, I think, just because I learned on the one. But anyway, here we are. So, I've played them all. I enjoy them all. Uh, I don't think... Yeah, it won't let me... Go. Oh, no, it will let me go into this. Good enough. Um, these are various things that are, like, unlocked, but I'm just going to be playing the, uh, campaign. So here we are. Um, I imagine... Well, let me go to either one of them. Ah, planet is shielded, keys needed from this planet, Tempest. Okay, so that's what that means. Okay, yeah, I mean, clearly you can see that there's a shield around that planet. I'm understanding things a little bit more. What is this? Ah, there we go. <laughs> Scars, wake up, Scars. Commander Scarsguard Abraxas. Uh, where, what? Wait a minute, who are you? I'm keeping the ship lights very low. You have slept for a very long time. My name is Leah. I don't know any Leah. Uh, Laia. I don't even know. The last thing I remember is Platus laughing and saying, Fortuna Favit Fadius. Where am I? Where is Platus? And who are you? I'm gonna... gonna th th this is kind of a... <laughs> I'm sorry, this is like ultra confusing. Because I'm not really sure if I remember it correctly. I believe this dude... Was like the, the player character, essentially. From the first... Uh, Creeper World. And then his daughter was like... One of the characters. Or I guess his like granddaughter, perhaps. A descendant with that name we'll go with, was uh, one of the characters in Creeper World 2. And Platus is some kind of, like, mythological figure that was leaving, like, a prophecy on how to defeat the Creeper. Um, slowly, Platus created me shortly after he placed you in suspended animation. I was your guardian for the eons that passed. I have watched over and protected you for many cycles. I'm part of the ship we are on. We have been in orbit around a stable singularity for many eons, hiding from all that transpired. Just how many eons? It's difficult to measure because of the expanse of space, the rift space cataclysm, variations in various cosmological constants. Quit stalling, just a round figure. Over five billion Earth standard years. My gods, why? Answer me, why? I'm sorry, Scars. All I know is that now is when I was to awaken you. I and the ship are now at your disposal. My only instructions from this point forward are to follow your commands. None of this makes any sense, or even seems possible. But I long ago abandoned the concept of impossible, so let's take a look. Ship sensors indicate we are no longer orbiting a singularity. 
Correct. I warped the ship to a nearby star system to begin the reactivation process. Unfortunately, there appears to be a warp inhibitor in the system, so we're stuck here till you do something about it. Warp inhibitor? Move the ship to Tempest, uh, the world without a shield, then launch ground activities. I'll explain once there. Okay. So basically, I'm going to give a little history lesson here too. Um, in this world, like humanity, I guess, has spread across the cosmos and, uh, you know, inhabits all these different planets you see here. Um, and there's this entity called the Creeper. And I, what I found enjoyable about, the, uh, about this game is that the your enemy is called Creeper. And Creeper is just a liquid ooze that oozes across the map. It has no, like, single entities or anything along those lines, essentially. You'll see it when we get to the game. Um, and Creeper basically, like, destroyed uh, the world. Kind of. <laughs> um, or, like, civilization. So you'll kind of see more of it here. Excellent. This world should suffice for demonstrating the core capabilities of this ship. There's a creeper emitter here. That is a creeper emitter. Uh, if you actually look over it, it tells you about how much creeper it emits and the interval at which it does. Yes, I'm afraid so. Much has happened while you slept. Dozens of human civilizations rose and fell, each trying ever more desperate measures as the creeper would always return. The last whispers of the final civilization haven't been heard in many thousands of years. As far as my sensors can ascertain, only ruins remain. Why was I forced to sleep through all this, only to awaken to utter desolation? Strange, this world seems to contain some manner of pod. Technological remnants are rare, so I would investigate. Follow the ship's automated assistance system and acquire that pod. Select the command node from the menu below and land it in the gray area in the upper left uh, corner of the map. Note, if necessary, you may move the map with the right mouse, arrow keys, or wasad. You may zoom the map with... Uh, okay. So I guess if I, yeah, if I zoom it in, then I can drag it around. But if I'm zoomed out sufficiently, I can't really drag it much. Before I do that, I want to uh, look. If you look down here, I was about to point with my finger on the rise. That's not how that works. Uh, we have a, I can't even, okay, those are just numbers down there. Uh, this is like an elevation marker. So this elevation here where my cursor is, is like elevation four. Down here is elevation one, and so on. Oh, also, it just occurs to me that we're not paused. We're, we're live right now. Um, so you can see, actually, the creeper is coming in. Um, furthermore, if you look here, uh, above the ground elevation, you can see the, like, blue mark, which is the, um, the elevation of the creeper itself. And I just want to point out, if we go up here, the elevation increases. Um, so the higher the creeper is the, like, higher it can go. So right now, like, the creeper's, you know, barely there, and up here, this elevation is at between four and five, it looks like. Yeah. So when the creeper keeps filling up, eventually it will overflow this and then start flooding onto this area. And it'll fill up everything here until it gets high enough to flood over this and so on. So that's essentially how this game works. Excellent. Now build collectors and connect them to the command node. Spread them out for maximum energy collection. The more green you see, the more energy you collect. Build 10 collectors. So we go through the inventory and we get collectors. Uh, up at the center right here. Oh, yeah, I can also just run my cursor into the edges up there. We have my current energy situation. I've got 25 energy and uh, my core is generating 1.5. So whenever you build something, it's going to use energy. So you can see this is taking up energy, but uh, it's less than my drain. Uh, so my, like, actual whatever wasn't really going down. Uh, I'm going to pause, and pauses you can do by pushing P, and I'm going to set up multiples of these so that we can kind of see something here. Now I'm draining faster, so my, like, actual energy stores were going down. Now if my energy stores had hit zero, it just would have slowed the process in which I built these things. You'll also see that my original 1.5 is now a 2.6. Um, as you can see, this green stuff here is the, like, indicator of how much energy is being collected from the collectors. Uh, as this hovers over here, that's the area that it will collect from. Uh, collection does not go over elevation, so that red stuff will not get collected. Um, likewise here. Furthermore, it needs line of sight, 
So anything being blocked by that one section is also being lost. Uh, and then the lines show, if you'll actually watch, let me unpause, you'll see the core shoots out the little, like, things and actually builds them. So if I put this here, nothing will happen because it can't be built. And space deselects, by the way. And then we just hit, uh, destroy. So we're gonna pause again and we're gonna build several of these. So the key here, or the goal, or whatever you want to call it, is to cover basically as much of the world or the map as you can in green, because that's increasing your uh, energy generation. Um, now as we go here, um, I'm gonna hit select, or space real quick. Uh, right here you can see these ones are built, and these ones that are still kind of um, like transparent are not. All of them will build, but it can only send uh, pack. They're called packets. It can only send packets to ones that it already has like line. It has the connection to. Uh, so like this one doesn't have a connection because these two aren't built yet. So until those are built, it won't actually start building it, and it also won't take energy to build that one yet either. So it's only when they actually are connected in some way, shape, or form that they start costing you energy. I'm going to pause again. It's generally a good idea to do your building while paused. Uh, and I'm, like, neurotic, and it's important to me that, like, every little bit gets covered. So I end up putting these a lot closer than is necessary, just because, like, I hate there being any section that's not being covered. And that should end up taking a pretty, yeah. So now the, uh, the generation is going slow. You can see my little lines uh, turn red. Weapons are required for destroying the creeper. Be careful to not overbuild and exceed your energy production. Build three pulse cannons now. Pulse cannons, uh, again, require access. Being in the middle of this does it in, not in any way make them build faster. At least in the way that you're thinking. Meanwhile, while those are building, I'm still going to continue my uh, collector, collector expanse. And uh, now I'm, I'm taxing my system. Uh, if you want, you can collect on these and hit, um, weapons are required for destroying yet. Yeah, you can disarm them and deactivate them. Deactivate means it stops sending packets. Uh, I mean, that was a bad example, I guess, because that one was already built. <laughs> now spread your network and defeat the blue creeper emitter. You will need to build a nullifier near the emitter to destroy it. Also, you don't, don't forget to connect your network to the pod behind the emitter. That would be the pod right there, just for the record. Uh, oh, hey, I'm not paused. Alright, I'm going to reactivate that. And uh, I'm going to try to showcase this as best I can while I'm still expanding. This is actually a rough spot to be trying to showcase something. Uh, just let me <laughs> expand some. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll just build another one. It doesn't really matter. Alright, so we're building one. Alright, so packets are being sent to it. Its little health bar is being filled up. Now I'm going to pause, and I'm going to hit deactivate. Now the packets that are already being sent will continue to be sent. But then no additional packets will be sent. Um, so right now it's stuck in the state. Now if we reactivate it, it will continue launching packets. The other thing is disarm. And disarm just means that the, uh, the weapon is no longer firing at targets. Um, it will continue to receive packets while it's in a disarm state, I believe. Let me double check that. We'll see, now it's hard for me to tell because that one's fully armed. And then as you can just see too, after they're um, built, they have to be armed, which is the red bar above them. Uh, and then as you can also see, they float. Uh, so to continue, like, to continually fire, here, I'm actually going to send this over here so that we can show it. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to continue just sort of building a network here. Uh, this creeper fills up the map, like, incredibly slowly, because this is, like, a tutorial mission, as you can probably guess. And there goes my cell phone. And since that was two boops in a row, that was probably a comment on one of my YouTube videos. So that is the weapon firing. Uh, and as it fires each time, the little red uh, bar is going down, because that's it firing ammo, essentially. 
or, well, I guess energy. And now it's out of energy, so if we build a connector here, once it's connected, it will, uh, it'll start rearming. Now I'd also like to point out, you can see that these orbs actually, like, follow the path. Um, and it doesn't set them out, like, in advance. So it did not start sending out rearm packets until that one was built. Even though, like, it was obviously that one was going to be built. So if you had made a, like, really long path that went kind of like this, it would take that long for the packets to get there. And it would, you know, you would have that situation. So, uh, it's usually better to kind of try to make the path as straight as possible. So this will actually, like, by making a straight path here and also making, like, a connector right there, um, it will, in fact, make your weapons kind of run smoother. Furthermore, we're going to keep continuing our uh, construction. Uh, da -da 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 -da. going kind of slow here. At this point, though, we've got plenty of energy generation, so there's really nothing to worry about. Uh, and now what we need to do is we need to basically, by using these weapons, force the creeper back far enough. Uh, you can actually see we split the creeper here, too. <laughs> um, I'll rearm all of my weapons, too, while we're flying. So our goal here is to just force the creeper back through means of these blasters firing just shot after shot until we can get ourselves close enough to that emitter to create a nullifier. I'd also like to point out that um, you see right here, I'm going to put this one here, the connection point is to that pulse rifle. Uh, the pulse rifle will act as a like connection point, but if the pulse rifle moves, the connection point will be lost. So uh, be mindful of that fact. Now I'm going to go here, and you can see the range of the nullifier. The emitter has to be within range of the nullifier for it to do anything. And that nullifier was too close to the creeper and was instead destroyed. Which happens. Um, you want to be careful when you start like moving your, uh, your pulse rifles, because while they're in the air, they cannot fire. So we've successfully grounded down the uh, the creeper, and now it's just an issue of building that so that we can get that up. too too low. That's a shame. I wonder if it'd be easier to go in a different direction. Nah. But once that gets all right, so that's built, and now it's being armed. It should be being armed, right? Yeah. Okay. It's being armed. We'll just throw that right there. Oh, and I'd also like to point out, too, that you can put your stuff in the creeper. They will take damage. Uh, the collectors will be instantly destroyed, but weapons will not be instantly destroyed. And that's the creeper firing. I'm sorry, the emitter firing. And now our, uh, our creeper has been destroyed. Furthermore, when emitters are destroyed, they uh, create those things. And uh, you can see, like, this is the range of the pulse rifle, but when it's there, that's the range of the pulse rifle. Um, all things have boosted range. Even um, the rate of its connections will increase. So you can see how it's connecting to the, the collector right there. So that's basically how that works. It's a very simple game, but... Um, at the higher difficulties and like the higher levels and stuff like that, you start getting a whole bunch of things. There's, as you can see by these things, there's a whole bunch of different weapons. So we got the Carcier Shield Key. Um, and then we're gonna just claim victory. You could continue playing if for any reason you wanted to. Uh, we have like the online scores. I'm just gonna kinda continue without submitting. Shields around, uh, Carcia lowered, fly there and engage ground operations. Is this the same message? This is the same message. Okay, skip all. So now we're going to start. Excellent. 
That pod from planet Tempest contained a shield key for this planet. Obtaining it allowed us to lower the shield and access this planet. Entire planet shielded? That must have been some desperate attempt to defend against the Creeper. One that sadly failed. The human civilization that developed the shield technology had high hopes. They accomplished many great and magnificent feats. But the end came for them just like all the others. There's a large structure here. <laughs> this must be the warp inhibitor. Yes, these inhibitors restrict warp travel to other systems. We need to destroy this inhibitor so we can leave this system. Destroying the inhibitor will destroy all other enemies on the map. Why would Creeper or Loki build warp inhibitors? Uh, this game roughly uses a... Like, Norse mythology. Um, the, like, city that you used to flee from the Creeper in the first game was called Odin City. And uh, there is a, like, intelligent entity behind the Creeper, while the Creeper is just goo, essentially. Uh, that entity is called the Loki. They did not. I recommended acting quickly and getting us out of here, Scars. No world is ever safe for long. Alright. Select the command node from the menu below and land it in the indicated area. Um, this map already has stuff um, partially built on it, so we can use that. Build a collector near the green tech artifact to obtain it. This will unlock the relay tech. Relays can be used for making long connections, but do not produce energy like collectors. So again, we are just going to build our little collection network. A little awkward here, but... And yeah, we can just tap into the existing collecting collection network, which is uh, nice. Kind of helps you get a head start. Not all courses have that. Um, some of them do. Some of them have weapons. Um, some of them don't. It's kind of just how it is. But yeah, it does give you a nice little head start, which can be helpful. And there, and there. And that one should connect me to the, yeah. All right, expand your network. Well, before I read that, expand your network and build weapons to engage the creeper. Your target is the large warp inhibitor at the lower right. Build a nullifier near it to take it out. And then I just got the relays. Um, relays create long distance connections, but can only but only to other relays. Relays also double packet speed. I will showcase the whole awesomeness of relays. Relays are actually pretty useful. Um, outside of obvious situations, like, you know, for example, like, this whole area is eventually going to fill up with Creeper. Um, this emitter is a little bit stronger than the old one. From the last mission. Um... So, I can use relays that just kind of like leapfrog on these islands and get over here. Uh, but there is actually another use for the relays, because as it said, um, you can kind of see it here, right? See how the relay has, it's connecting to the other relay? So that kind of allows you to uh, move faster. And because the relays also increase packet speed, um, they're very useful in that sense. So we're gonna make like a little network of relays. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to finish my collection network. Uh, some maps actually have like just pure gaps in them where you basically need to use relays to get across. Um, this one is obviously not in dire of a situation. Um, can I just sneak a uh, nullifier in there? Oh, I can totally just sneak a nullifier in there. Check that out. I don't even need to make weapons for this one. <laughs> We're just going to go straight with the nullifier. And same with over here. So yeah. Uh, it's, it's good even, like, even if I was going to need to build, like, a whole defensive line to defend against the Creeper and then, like, slowly grind through, it's still good to set up a network of relays because it makes things run a little bit smoother. And, you know, like, if I put a weapon here, it would need to kind of go, like, loop around and go kind of awkwardly. The relays are a good way to just have a, like, straight, direct path. Um, uh, so basically we're done here once the, uh, the nullifiers come online. 
Uh, considering how little creeper that one's putting out, and considering that, that one's already dead, essentially. Uh, really not a lot. This, yeah, this one's basically over. <laughs> We're done. But just looking at the, uh, the elevation of the creeper amounts there, you can see how much creeper had come out of that one, and so on. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm going to do some more videos of this. I kind of enjoy this game. I think it's a pretty fun game. Uh, but yeah, so that's that. Bam. Claim victory. Oh, look, I got an achievement. Check it out. Alright, so click the star and access the sector map and then leave the sector. So we are in Septus and now we're going to Abitus. And uh, I'm going to just kind of end the video once I get there. Um, so for now, people, um, like, favorite, comment, subscribe, check me out on Patreon, Twitter, and Facebook. I will see you folks later.